Today, boys and girls, we are going to be working on the same skill that you worked on yesterday. So today we're going to be working on our home link 8-5 together. In order to do a great job today, you will want to have this paper in front of you as we work through it. So push pause right now and go find this 8-5 um, home link and a pencil. All right, so you should be all ready for your math lesson today. So let's read the problem and think about what it is that we will need to be finding. It says, designing a bookcase. Nicholas is building a bookcase. To help with the design, he measured the height of each of his books to the nearest 1 8th inch. His measurements are given below. And boys and girls, these are the measurements that Nicholas found. And it says, plot the data set on the line plot below. So when I begin a problem like this, I consider two things. I consider looking at the data, and then I consider looking at the actual numbers on the line plot. And in the data, I am noticing that some of the measurements are in terms of halves, seven and a half, eight and a half, there's another seven and a half, six and a half, and some of them are in terms of um, eighths. So here's six and seven eighths, six and seven eighths, seven eighths, six and seven eighths, nine and three eighths. And some of them are in terms of whole numbers. So here's an eight, there's a nine, there's an eight hiding under there. And some of them are in terms of um, fourths. So here's one, nine and one fourth. And here's another and another. So as you can see, we've got to plot all of these um, pieces of data, but just to begin with, all of the pieces are using different denominators. So we're going to talk about what we do when that happens. Now, when I go to my line plot that they have given me right here, I am seeing that they have put um, six and a half to seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, nine, and nine and a half. So they actually are giving us a line plot that um, they've started by placing every half inch. But then if I take those away and I look at the marks on the line plot, I have these marks right here. So I need to figure out what exactly um, I'll need to put there under those marks. So I need to think about our job today. And at the top of the page, it says that he marked his books to the nearest 1 8th of an inch. So because of that, I know that I am going to need to be recording my pieces of data to the nearest eighth of an inch. So knowing that, I need to make some notes on my line plot. So if I need to figure out what one half is equal to in terms of eighths, I say two times what gives me eight? And that answer is four. And whatever we do to the denominator, we must do the same to the numerator. So one times four equals four. So I know that one half is the same or equal to four eighths. So if I take this and put it down here, I am saying that six and a half is actually six and four eighths.
Now that's going to be very, very important when we go to plot our data. So if this one is six and four eighths, and we are measuring to the nearest eighths, then wouldn't you say that this one would be six and five eighths? Six and six eighths? six and seven eighths. So if we continue on, we would know that this next line here would represent seven and, can you say it? If you said one eighth, you are correct. Seven and two eighths. Seven and three eighths. And seven and one half would be the same or equal to seven and what would you say? Yes, four eighths. Seven and five eighths. Seven and six eighths. Seven and seven eighths. And look what we have next. Eight holes. So I am going to continue on and finish my line plot, um, numbering it. And I would like you to press pause and do that as well. And when you are finished, come on back and check your work. Hi, welcome back. At this point, take a look at the fractions that are on the line plot that you placed there. Make sure you double check that your answers match mine, and if they don't, now would be the time to make sure that yours are correct. So push pause again, and so you can take a minute to check those things out. So here we are, we are now ready to begin, and I am going to take a close look at my fractions in my set of data. What I'm noticing is that some of the fractions have a half with the whole number, and some of them have a quarter with the whole number, some of them have an eighth, um, and they are, you know, there are many different kinds there. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that I find the equivalent fractions to those that I just circled so therefore, I can place them on my number line in terms of eighths. So let's take a look. If I had to place six and a half on my number line, I would find it right here. So I could actually do that. If I have to place nine and one fourth on my number line, I know that it will be somewhere here, but I have to ask myself, what is it really in terms of eighths? So I have to find an equivalent fraction to nine and one fourth. So just working with the fraction part, I know that I need to put it in terms of eighths. So I need to find an equivalent fraction here. So I ask myself four times what equals, and I know the answer is two, whatever I do to the denominator, I must do to the numerator, and one times two is two. Therefore, my equivalent fraction is nine and two eighths. When I place nine and one fourth on my number line, I'm actually going to be looking for nine and two eighths, and I will place it right there. So let's remember that equivalent fraction when we get to that point. So I'm going to look at my data and plot each number. And if you remember the last time we did line plots, I reminded you to keep track of everything that you mark on the line plot by crossing off the numbers in the pieces of data. So here we go.
What I would like you to do is I would like you to finish plotting the data on the line plot and push pause now and finish and then come back to check your answers. Good luck. Push pause now and check how you did. Well, hopefully by this time you have all of your data plotted and you are ready to solve some of those problems down below. I am going to get you started, give you a few little hints and pointers, and then what I want you to do is to finish numbers one and two and the two division problems at the bottom, numbers three and four. So let's take a look at these questions. It says, use the completed line plot to answer the questions below. Number one, what is the difference in height between the tallest and shortest books? So if you think about what that word difference means, what does the word difference mean? What does it tell us to do? If you're thinking it tells us to subtract, you are correct. Very good. So in this problem, number one, we're going to need to subtract to find our answer. And take a look at number two. It says Nicholas wants the space between the shelves to be seven eighths inch taller than his tallest book. So there are a few important words there. And letter A says, how far apart should he make the shelves? And letter B, read this one carefully because it gives you a hint. All right, boys and girls, I would like you to finish this after this video is over. And nice job in math today. This was a tough lesson, but you hung in there. Be sure to work those division problems. Good luck.